Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. This is a topic that was asked by one of our viewers and so we are going to discuss it today. That is the basics of luminal anastomosis. We have already discussed biliary entric anastomosis. So today we will discuss luminal anastomosis. This photo that you can see on the slide is basically checking the patency of the anastomosis. So overview, we are going to see the basics of anastomosis. That is the definition, the relevant anatomy and physiology of intestinal anastomosis healing. We are going to see the phases of healing and the factors that affect it. Then we will go into the anastomosis details and we will see the configuration of anastomosis, which can be end to side, end to end. There can be a classification based on functionality and mode of creation. Lastly, we will see the layers of the anastomosis. We will see how they are numbered and one or two special stitches that are commonly asked in the exam. So very practical topic, something that is not very difficult, but very important to understand. So anastomosis is derived from a Greek word. Ana is without and stoma is a mouth. So that is anastomosis. Intestinal anastomosis in textbook definition is a creation of a connection between two hollow organs or areas of an organ to enable the passage of contents. So this is a very simple diagram all of you must be knowing. Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and the serosa. So these are the four layers that are there in the intestinal wall. Out of these, the submucosa and the serosa are important in the anastomosis. So we will see those two in detail. The submucosa is the highest collagen content and it imparts the greatest tensile strength to the anastomosis. It also has the greatest suture holding capacity. That is why there have been sutures like Lambert which are extra mucosal single layer anastomotic sutures where submucosa needs to be taken. Right. So submucosa is important to understand. It has the highest tensile strength and it gives the greatest suture holding capacity to the anastomosis. On the other hand, the serosal healing is fairly quick and it achieves a watertight seal very quickly due to a fibrin seal and this leads to early integrity of the anastomosis. Coming to phases of anastomosis healing, they are like phases of wound healing. The first phase is acute inflammatory phase which lasts for 3 to 4 days. Neutrophils come in the first 24 hours, then macrophages followed by collagenolysis. This is the phase that is commonly affected by chemotherapy, steroids, targeted therapy, biological therapy, as well as immunosuppression. And that is why bowel anastomosis needs to be protected in patients on any of these therapies, right? Because if the acute inflammatory phase is affected, the anastomosis can give way in the first three to four days of surgery. Next is the proliferative phase, which goes from five days to up to four weeks. The highest proliferation is basically collagen synthesis, which is at seven to eight days. And mainly it is by proline hydroxylation. The third phase is maturation and remodeling phase, which goes on from a month to up to three months. So these are basically the phases of anastomosis healing. You have to understand that when the collagen decreases due to lysis versus when the new collagen starts synthesis, which is roughly between third and sixth day, that is between the phase one and phase two, the tensile strength is the lowest around that time. So that is why the anastomosis cases, the rounds are commonly meant to be very important between third and fifth day because that is when most of them leak. Right. So you would have heard your consultant saying on rounds that the anastomosis most commonly leaks between third and sixth day. Right. Unless there has been a technical error where it will leak on the first day. OK. So this is the basis of that analysis. Now, basic tenets of a good anastomosis. There are bowel factors and there are surgeon factors. There are disease factors. Factors like patients on steroids, chemotherapy, biological therapy, which affect healing. But for bowel factors, remember that it has to be a tension-free anastomosis. The vascularity of the bowel has to be ascertained. The mucosa has to be inverted. Okay, that is the mucosa should be taken on the inner side. Okay, it should not be in between the anastomotic layers. 
distal obstruction should not be there. The bowel should be healthy. That is, there should be peristalsis in the loop of the bowel. There should be no luminal disparity between the diameter of the cut ends of the bowel. If there is uni, if there is luminal disparity, it can be managed using cheat link. Bowel edema is again a bad factor which can lead to anastomotic leaks. So these are the important factors that you need to assess before starting your anastomosis. Luminal line and mesenteric orientation are very important. If the lie is not matching or the mesenteries are crossing each other, there can be ischemia and that can lead to anastomotic leaks. Coming to disease and patient factors, we have already seen factors like steroids, chemotherapy, immunosuppression. Other factors include anemia, patients on heavy inotrope support, low albumin, sepsis or abdominal contamination, patients who are immunosuppressed, patients who have Crohn's disease or patients who are on heavy smoking or alcohol, which affects essentially the first phase of healing post-radiation patients and patients who are malnourished. So these are some of the important factors. If you are taking an emergency case with abdominal contamination, with patients on inotropes or a very old age patient with low albumin and anemia, diabetic, on steroids, these are the cases where anastomosis ideally should be avoided or at least protected with a covering stoma. Surgeon factors, you need to handle the tissues very gently. Adequate exposure and excess is important. You need to know your technique, standardize one technique that you like and continue doing that technique lifelong. There has to be attention to preoperative factors that we have discussed and postoperative rounds are very important in these cases till the patient has one or two normal bowel movements. Now coming to configuration of anastomosis, the anastomosis can be end to end as in A or end to side as in B or it can be side to side anastomosis which can be done in hand sewn or staple fashion. Based on functionality, the anastomosis can be isoperistaltic or antiperistaltic. When it is antiperistaltic, it is known as functional anastomosis. When the two loops are having the peristalsis in the same direction, they become anti-peristaltic if they are attached in a side-to-side -side configuration. Okay, What that will result in is that the flow of contents will be impeded a bit due to change in the direction of peristalsis. That is what is known as a functional anastomosis. Now coming to type of anastomosis, it can be hence one single layer and double layer. The layers can be taken with continuous suture or interrupted sutures. You can also do stapled anastomosis with linear or circular staplers. Now coming to the most important slide of this presentation, the layers of intestinal anastomosis. So in this figure, you can see that one layer has already been completed and that is the posterior most layer and that is the layer number. Four. You can see the knots have been tied on both sides. This layer is usually the seromuscular outer layer 4. The layer that is now starting is a full thickness connel stitch layer. We will see what a connel stitch is in the next slide. But this is the layer 3. right? So when you are holding the bowel in a way that there is a posterior surface and an anterior surface, the posterior most layer is layer 4 which is seromuscular layer. Layer 3 is a full thickness, usually continuous layer. Once the layer 3 is over and you come on the anterior side, you take the full thickness suturing first, right? So now this suturing that is coming on the anterior side is starting the layer 2, right? So you can already see layer 4. Layer 3 has covered the layer 4 and now layer 2. Finally, once layer 2 is over, you take an anterior seromuscular layer and that is layer 1. So whenever you are asked in exam, what are the four layers of anastomosis? The fourth layer is taken first in OT, which is the seromuscular posterior layer. Then you take the posterior full thickness connel, which is the third layer. Then you take the second layer, which is the anterior full thickness connel. And then you take the first layer, which is the seromuscular layer, 
right? So we talked about the full thickness corneal stitch. This is a diagram that shows the full thickness corneal stitch. What it means is you go in the direction of these red arrows, okay? You go from outside to inside, then you go from inside to outside, in the same side, then you come on the other side, and you again go outside and inside and inside and outside. So there are two bites on each side, okay? And this layer continues progressing in a direction, outside in, inside out, outside in, inside out. This is a corneal stitch, right? On the other hand, a lambert stitch or an extra mucosal stitch is a simplest pattern for intestinal organs where it also involves the lips of the wound and it never involves the mucosa, right? So the mucosa is not taken in this stitch. This is an extra mucosal stitch and is known as Lambert stitch. So some people do extra mucosal single layer anastomosis using Lambert stitches, right? It can lead to slight stenosis of the bowel, so it is not routinely used. The standard routine practice is what is the four layer pattern that you saw in the previous slide. So to summarize a very simple video on luminal anastomosis basics, we have seen the definition, we have seen the anatomy, we have seen the three phases of healing of anastomosis, we have seen the different patient factors, disease factors and surgeon factors as well as intraoperative bowel factors that you need to take care of while deciding whether to do an anastomosis or a stoma or to do a covering stoma to protect the anastomosis. Based on configuration, your anastomosis can be end-to-end -end or end-to-side. A functional anastomosis is anti-peristaltic, but commonly done anastomosis are isoperistaltic. Mode of creation can be hand-sewn or staple, continuous or interrupted, single layer or double layer. Anatomy of the anastomosis, we saw the standard four layers of the anastomosis, the posterior seromuscular, the third layer which is full thickness corneal, second layer which is full thickness corneal and the first layer which is anterior seromuscular. So that is how they are numbered and we saw the corneal and the Lambert stitches. Thank you.